Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids. I got a little extra bass in my voice this morning yes, for some reason. You do. <laughs> I sound like you. <laughs> oh, boy. And welcome to season three and episode number 300. I know, I don't know where this came from. I just woke up this morning and I'm very white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little dry, kid. I'm not moist enough. <laughs> um episode number 300 and uh, i'm going to guess 22 of the daily 21. morning show here on 21 on well okay whatever on the crier media network yeah today recording day is wednesday february 21st 2024 and it looks like it's going to be a lovely day here at the Beaver Lodge. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. With me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. And Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today while I have a little bit of tea? Good morning, Mr. Beaver. My mental health today, well, sir, um, I think it's pretty good, actually. Uh, physically, I'm feeling a little off like i'm not not 100 percent physically but uh mentally i feel good um yeah happy and good spirits and a great mood um i think uh, what else i don't know that well my beloved bridget is is uh, ill right now she's she's had a oh, cold no. the last couple of days yeah so she's been staying home because she doesn't want me to get sick because you know my three paid sick days a year don't exactly um pay oh. all the bills so I've already taken one this year or last year. Anyway, you understand. I have two yeah. left and uh, I'd like to not have to use them if I don't have to, right? So yeah, yeah physically I'm a little a little off, not 100%, but emotionally and mentally I feel if I was any better, I'd be a twin. Well, that's good. That's very good. I think so. I agree. It's, uh, yeah, can't explain it. Don't need to understand it. Just going to roll with it. All right. Sounds good to me. Oh, boy. Sorry. Excuse me. Got a cough. Um, well, Cassie wants you to do Luke, I'm your father. Luke, I'm your father. <laughs> there you go. I am Batman. Batman. <laughs> Oh my god! I have a cup of actual throat coat tea with me right oh. now. Yes, although uh, the people at the musical are going to love me because I'm singing the bass line, and I can actually give them some. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely bassy for you. It's uh, it's much lower than normal. I know, and I'm not even trying because mm -hmm. normally when I get if I'm getting this low, it's, I'm deliberately, you know, thinking, you know, channeling Barry White and you know right. going down there, but. And I just open my mouth and it comes out. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Roll with it, right? <laughs> roll, yeah, we'll roll for it. Uh, today, I get the sexy voice. 
<laughs> I remember somebody was saying, I, I'm not sure if it was Jay, one of James' kids. Is that the guy with the the guy with the, the low voice and the guy with the high voice? Yeah. We switched today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I got to go going. the studio, Mike. Here. Just... Yes. I am Batman. <laughs> we have the kids going, it's all about the bass, about the bass. No. <laughs> no treble. No treble. No treble, all trouble. There we go. All right, kids and gubs. Uh, let's see what we have for you today. Have you seen how the, the uh, Conservative Party of Canada is losing their mind over uh, somebody promoting one of Canada's largest uh, agricultural exports? Aquaculture? Yes. Exports? Lobsters? Yes. Yes. You realize down east, eating a lobster is like eating a steak in Alberta. It's not out of the ordinary. It's $3.2 billion worth of exports per year. And they're losing their shit over this guy having lobster uh, in Chinese New Year, which is what is traditional in Chinese New Year in that part of the world. By the way, they just got to find something to pick and dig at. And that one just... <laughs> Well, I was like, what is this all about? When I discovered what it was about, I'm like, anything to distract from the fact that you're a bunch of shit gibbons. Yeah. We have this. I'll put up the picture here. It is Minister Lawrence McCauley, mm -hmm. who I believe is from Atlanta, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. That should not have happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's uh, <laughs> going touchdown in Malaysia. I'm looking forward to a productive week of meeting with officials, industry leaders, and partners from Canada and the Indo-Pacific to promote our world-class products like the lobster I enjoyed for lunch in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Now, the conservative angle on this is, gee, look at this. It's an affordability crisis. Mm -hmm. Two million people are going to food banks, blah, blah, blah. And look at you. Look at this. Get a t-shirt, you know, taking pictures of yourself eating lobster. Man, you are out of touch. Just out of touch, completely mm -hmm. untouched. Lobster right. farmers are glad he's there. Yes, absolutely. And conservatives seem to have a problem with lobster because I remember after the last cabinet shuffle, I think three days after the shuffle or something like that happened, the minister of small business, the new minister of small business, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Richie Valdez, yes. was yeah. out in Atlantic Canada. Yes, and she did her Foodie Friday. Mm -hmm. And she showed herself eating a lobster roll and they lost their minds then too. See, lobster rolls at subways in Atlantic Canada are a regular feature. It's yeah. like ham or roast yeah. beef. Now, I'm not sure she went to Subway. No, she no, no. But, it, just, but I'm just making a statement. Yes. You know. So they're, they're taking the visual of people mm -hmm. eating lobster because lobster is seen as shishi and bougie. Mm -hmm. Yes, and look at you dining out rich on the Canadian taxpayer's dime and flaunting it and all that kind of stuff. Boy, you're out of touch. Now, maybe considering the current political context, a picture of yourself eating the lobster mm -hmm. was maybe not the best choice. Maybe he should have been at the restaurant close to the lobster tank and saying, hey, I'm promoting the lobster. So here's something else. So this, this story about lobster dinners are perfectly okay for conservatives, but totally outrageous for liberals. So a lot of people started posting pictures of the, the, the yeah, conservatives. Yep, 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 yep. Let's, let, 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 let's go in order. <laughs> let's go okay. in order. But here, look at this, this comment from, uh, is it Ina or Ina? Ina. Yes. It should look up how lobster f first came to be considered a delicacy. Spoiler, it was brainwashing through advertising. That is correct. As a matter of fact... Um, if you talk to somebody of, a, of the boomer generation, if they went to school in Atlantic Canada and had lobster rolls or lobster in their lunch, they were embarrassed and tried to hide it because only poor people ate lobster at the time. That right. is a fact. That was considered poor people's food. Yes. You ate lobster because you couldn't afford steak. Right. So Lawrence McCauley comes, represents the writing of Cardigan and Prince Edward Island. He also happens to be the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food. Mm -hmm. So he's doing his job. Just like Rishi Valdez was doing her job. Yeah. Promoting small businesses, small tourism businesses, small businesses, small restaurants, eateries. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the, the, the political party that likes to tell you that they're all about business, all about the small, small guy, all about the, except if it doesn't suit their narrative, then they will throw you under the bus like they do every damn time. Every person does something that promotes Canadian small businesses, like when the prime minister bought donuts from a small donut shop in Winnipeg and they lost their shit over that. Yep. They don't care about anything but power. They don't want to govern. They don't want to promote your business. Remember in the province of Ontario during when, when the shutdown, the business shutdown occurred, what stores stayed open? The big box, gigantic stores, mom and pop shops, which actually could control crowds better, were made to close. Conservative governments did that. Yep. So there's this thing that conservatives do where they complain about something the liberals are doing. Mm -hmm. And then you dig a little bit and you find out that the conservatives are doing the same damn thing. The prime example I used to, I like to lose is when the prime minister went down to the Aga Khan's Island, mm -hmm. they turned around. Oh my God, he's so terrible. And at the exact same time they were doing that, the then interim leader of the conservative party, Miss mm -hmm. Ronna Ambrose was on the huge yacht of her very rich then boyfriend's good buddy. Yeah. Now, she was on the yacht of her rich boyfriend's good buddy. The prime minister was at the island of a man who was an honorary pallbearer at his father's funeral. Yes. He's known him his whole life. Mary Dawson, the then ethics commissioner, the one appointed by Carter, by mm -hmm. Harper, who very rarely found an ethics violation that she was ready to slap someone on <laughs> very, very rarely in 10 years, very, very rarely mm -hmm. and went out with a bang, finding one on her last case, which happened to be the one for Trudeau because she decided that he and the Aga Khan were not friends because they didn't hang out despite like a 30 something year difference, age difference, mm -hmm. family history, family history be damned. Right. But then again, we were supposed to believe that he and David Johnson were ski buddies despite yeah. 30 years. <laughs> and so they skied right. together. Yeah. Because they skied together once or twice. When I think the prime minister was 12 or something. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the Aga Khan is not a friend. David Johnson is a friend. Conservatives have a very hard time, conservative politicians, determining what is a friend or is not, probably because they don't have any. Mm -hmm. Um, Hey, they're the party nobody wants to work with. There's a reason for that. Indeed. I'm just saying. So, well, turns out that there are images going around of a big party that was had where there was stuff like duck mm -hmm. and beef and venison and lobster rolls. Posted yeah, by the yeah. conservatives. These same people who turn around and go, oh my God, he's eating lobster, would have had absolutely no problem if Mr. McCauley was eating a best, best, best quality Alberta steak. Yeah, that would have been fine, right? Probably would be about the same price in a mm -hmm. restaurant. Right, your lobster is running like thirty, thirty-five, thirty-eight dollars, thirty-eight to forty something dollars. A nice big thick steak. Go to the keg. Yeah, about the same price. It's gonna run you about the same thing. Damn close. But it's lobster, and it's Atlantic Canada. Yeah, that's where right. the lobster comes from. But conservatives have a love-hate relationship with Atlantic Canada. They keep on saying that they seem to want to win there, but any time that the Prime Minister seems to be doing something, like, for example, removing carbon pricing on home heat fuel. Yeah, they have a problem with that, don't they? Which happened to, yes, geographically help Atlantic Canada specifically. Mm -hmm. Even though it's used all across the country and the program applied all across the country, but because more homes there heat that way. Well, they lost their minds over that too, right? 
So we got their um, director. Oh, looks like we lost Mr. Beaver. I don't know what happened there. There he's back. Putting out what tweets happened? like. You, you disappeared oops. for a sec. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I know you're back. You disappeared for a sec. I don't know what happened. You were just gone. I've lost all sound and I'm frozen on my screen. You're good here. You have to, if you can hear me, you put it in the chat, Mr. Grizzly, for me. Okay, I'm good here. All right. For some reason, I've stopped moving, but you can still hear me. Yeah. Um, she posted a tweet that said, hot tip for government ministers. Don't post pictures of yourself eating crustaceans while hardworking Canadians are living in their cars and surviving on KD. Um, so what she's saying, if we're changing that from conservative bullshit to English, mm -hmm. we don't need the votes. Much like Basically, Andrew Shearer yeah. said, we don't need your Indian votes to the indigenous community. Yeah, he did say and that. How do you know this? Because you've never seen Sarah Fisher offer this kind of hot tip when government ministers post pictures of themselves eating prime quality Alberta beef steaks. Yeah, she doesn't have a hot tip then, do you? Does she? Of course not. Only of that? Of course not. I can't hear you, Mr. Grizzly. The sound is gone as well. Um, I'm going to try and uh, log out and log back in. Yeah, go ahead. You can uh, take go it ahead. over. And, yeah. Because I would like to be I don't know what happened. You. I don't know what happened there, Mr. Beaver. just literally dropped off, and then he came back. It was very strange. Uh, sometimes tech just does weird stuff like that. So hopefully he'll jump in and out, and that should be able to bring him back. I could hear him fine. I assume that you could in the chat as well. If, let me know if you could still hear Mr. Beaver, because I would. he was loud and clear and crystal clear on my end. So hopefully... Whatever it was, he's able to come back in just a second or two. Either way, this whole thing is just, it stinks to high heaven. It's just another example of the cons being con artists because they seem to have an issue with a minister doing his job promoting Atlantic Canada's largest export. $3.2 billion worth of lobster gets exported around the world. So he's out there promoting a product that, by the way, is not deemed to be bougie in atlantic canada it, it was the poor person's meal for many many decades until advertising changed all of that so you know they can go on and on and on and say that they're being bougie by eating a product that at one point in time was the working class person's meal and is now a major major income driver in atlantic canada when, when they're doing it, when they're eating lobster at a big dinner that we paid for, by the way, because it's a huge party that was thrown at Stornoway, they were eating all this wonderful food, duck and lobster, crab, I believe was on the menu, along with, uh, oh, was there some bear, I believe? I'm yes, not sure. bear. Bear was on the menu. So all of that was there, and that's okay. But the second a minister from the other party is doing his job abroad, they got a shit all over him. Now, again, like you said, maybe, maybe the optics aren't great because yes, people are starving. So I will agree with you on that one. I'm like, oh, I don't think the optics are very good. But the minute you point out that, well, you guys did it, when you did it, it seemed to be okay. And we didn't throw a hissy fit over it because I don't know, we're not children, we're adults. But if you're gonna behave like that, Every time a minister is doing their job, guess what? We've got the receipts. Let's go to the tape. Suddenly, they shut their pie holes very, very quickly. Well, here's the thing. Speaking of receipts. Oh, Mr. oh yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, there is a, an MP named Rick Perkins from the Conservative Party of Canada. Mm -hmm. He represents the writing of South Shore St. Margaret's. In, uh, I'm guessing he's probably Nova Scotia. Uh, he was, he was born in the Halifax Regional Municipality. Maybe he doesn't live there anymore. Uh, yeah, in Nova Scotia, South Shore St. Margaret's. And um, people have started to point out a tweet from his from June 7th, 2022, Mr. Grizzly. Because here's the thing, right? 
like I said, with Rana Ambrose on the boat. They mm. complain about something, and you just do a little check. I was and proud to doubt. provide some Nova Scotia lobster for the conservative wild game party hosted at Starnaway, the home of the official opposition leader. Last night, MPs from across Canada got to enjoy lobster rolls made fresh from Nova Scotia lobster. All right. And he's showing a big, big honking ass salad lobster. bowl yeah. full of lobster, you know, with all the, everything that you need to make a lobster roll in it. Now, so. <laughs> now here's the thing. People complained, pointed that out, and um, he decided to put out a tweet saying, yeah, I paid for that. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Grizzly, it turns out that though he may have paid for it, mm -hmm. He expensed it, didn't he? <laughs> February 6th, uh, so June 6th, 2022. Total attendees, $200. To celebrate a significant event, $462.50. Supplier, Clearwater Seafoods. Yeah, he did pay for it. And then expensed it. Funny how that works. Again... We have the receipts, cons. Stop trying to con us. Literally, we have literally the have the receipts to prove it. Here's the thing. You need to understand. Every expense is tracked and audited and put into the record and is available for every Canadian across the country or around the world for that matter. You could be an expat somewhere. You could be working in another part of the world and you want to know what the riding that you once lived in, what your MP is expensed? Well, guess what? You can find that out very, very easily. It's public record. It's there for you to see. So they're trying to con you. They, they're lying to your face, and they're not even good at it. It's, they're so bad at this. They're terrible at it. And here you go, Mr. Grizzly. If we're, we're looking because, you know, we like to bring the receipts. So here's the proof. Yes, and I paid for it. So there we go. They're talking about lobster gate is such a waste of time. Grasping at straws, really? Don't CPC have bigger fish to fry? How many CPC MPs complain about a liberal eating lobster while they expense lobster themselves? They had that wild game night at Stornoway, if I recall. Moose, what was it? Bison, burgers, lobster rolls, duck kebabs, red persons. Yes, and I paid for it. Mm -hmm. And then I have receipt. He's full of crap. He expenses the lobster. <laughs> <laughs> See, and the, the hell, hell you, you did. did. The ratio. Oh, yeah. Come again. The ratio on this is terrible. You get a 126 a day food allowance on the backs of every Canadian, yet you voted against a kid's school lunch program. Why should you get the taxpayer dollars but not deserving kids? And we're reimbursed. So you lied. Omitting a thing that's relevant is still lying, sir. Yes, sins of omissions are lying. Um, and it just goes on yeah. and on and on. And uh, Mr. Perkins uh, went quiet after that. Gee, I wonder why. But he still left the tweet up saying I paid for it. Mm -hmm. Let the lie survive. Mr. Grizzly, one of our favorite people. One of our favorite Who is here this morning. Hello. Let's have a look <laughs> at what our buddy Creek Pete has to say. So the conservatives are at it again, trying to create another fake controversy, this time with Lawrence McCauley, who is the Minister of Agriculture and Food for Canada. And so he touched down in Malaysia, having a productive week with industry leaders and partners in Indo-Pacific to promote World Cross products like lobster. So he had Canadian lobster in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Because, you know, liberals are not worth the costs because we got to get those fucking stupid slogans in, right? But apparently promoting Canadian fisheries in other countries, that's not worth the cost. It's, it's an outrage. How tone deaf can people be? Well, I mean, it's literally his job, Melissa. It's, it's, it's literally his job, you fraud. Another luxury trip. <laughs> Fake outrage. Paid liar. This one. <laughs> How out of touch can he be? I mean, it's literally his job. If you knew what your job was, Melissa, 
maybe you could do something. Maybe maybe you would actually be worth the cost that we're paying you instead of just being an internet troll. But anyway, this one, this one, fantastic. Because I guess Nova Scotia lobster is for elitists. Right, Melissa? Yeah. Genius. Fucking genius. Because you know, liberals are world traveling elitists and they're so out of touch. Uh, oops. Oopsie. <laughs> $600 a plate dinners? No, that's not elitist. That's not out of touch. Uh -uh. It's all good when it's the conservatives, right? 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 No, no, it's all good. No, no fake outrage there. No. I'm so utterly sick and tired of these rage farming, compulsive liar conservatives dividing Canadians and then pretending that they're not the ones doing it. It's, it's disgusting. Our approach is going to be different. Thank you. First of all, Justin Trudeau has made Canada weak, poor, and defenseless. <laughs> His plan for national defense is to rely on Joe Biden or Donald Trump to protect Canada. That puts <sighs> Except, once again, he's a compulsive liar. Who cut spending to the military? Who increased it? Who? <laughs> Who cut spending? Look at the years. Spending goes down. Spending goes back up. Who made Canada defense list? Every word that these guys say is a lie. They are compulsive liars. Nothing that they say is true. The guy is spending uh, taxpayer money traveling across Canada when there's no election like a drunken sailor. But he's not out of touch. I mean, I'm so sick and tired of these people. If you're vo it's juvenile bullshit. And if you're falling for it, it's because you're a child. Man is never wrong. Man is never wrong. Nope. And once again, <laughs> receipts. Literally receipts. So we're talking a lot about uh, Melissa Lanceman in there. We have Asif Hossein on Twitter going, on the extremely stupid lobster controversy, a reminder that a conservative MP was a former lobbyist for a department store known for destroying local businesses. So one of the richest families in America can get richer is probably not your friend in the affordability crisis. Yeah, yeah. Paging Melissa Lanceman. Paging Melissa Lanceman. Let's not forget about Melissa that. Lanceman, please come to the white courtesy phone. Paging Melissa Lanceman. Let's not forget about <laughs> Jenny Byrne. Yeah. Who her firm lobbies for. Oh, that's right. Lob laws. Oh. Yeah, uh, for the kids who weren't, uh, who were listening at home, uh, Creek Pete showed uh, this little graphic uh, that talks about spending. conservative uh, spending, uh, well, spending on travel, mm -hmm. flying around the world, and uh, showing that uh, the conservatives have billed about $300,000 more for travel to us than the ruling party. <laughs> and have taken more trips? Yeah. And um, to continue, then we have this guy here who they keep on sending out the wrong guy, man. Well, you put this one up. Andrew Shear, who's still working off his debt, clearly, yeah. tweets Mr. Grizzly. Trudeau liberals don't need to worry about their carbon tax driving up grocery prices. Now, when they get lobster, now they, now when they get lobster in Kuala Lumpur. Not when. They force you to pay more, but they don't feel, I, I can hardly see that just as I'm going to blow it up. There we go. Okay, sorry. I'll start again. Trudeau liberals don't need to worry about their carbon tax driving up grocery prices. Not when they get lobster in Kuala Lumpur. They force you to pay more, but they don't feel the pain unless they run out of garlic butter. And how does he label this? Out of touch alert. Okay. <laughs> Guy. <laughs> Who's still working off his debt because he used taxpayer funded political donations to buy himself a minivan and send his kids. He's got five of mm -hmm. them to private school when we've already all paid to send them to public school. Yes. Once. Has thoughts. About being out of touch, sir, sit down. You have not got it. Uh, you have not the right. You have not the right. You have not the right. You don't. I'm sorry, you do not. Actually, I'm not sorry. You don't have the right to tell us how to behave when you spent millions of dollars that wasn't yours to spend. 
Uh, well, close to a close million. to a million. Sorry, I'm sorry. was it nine hundred thousand? Yeah. Something like that. But but while the entire time it, he was Speaker of the House, and then all the time that he was Leader of the Opposition, literally living rent free. L- literally, because in Canada, the Speaker of the House also gets a residence. Yeah. So the man didn't pay rent for what, how many years? Like, uh, easily six, if not more. Well, he was speaker for how I don't long? know how long he was speaker. I, I have to check. Check that one out. Man didn't pay rent for years. And he has the audacity to to build, to send his children to private school? He was a speaker uh, from 2011 to 2015. And then served as the leader of the opposition from 2017 to 2020. So that's about seven years. Yeah, seven years rent free, and maybe with a chef and people cleaning his house. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed, out of touch. And um, here's the other lovely thing, because you know I kept on mentioning Stuart, uh, mentioning Stuart Benson from the Hill Times, mm-hmm. how he's doing some really good work. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, if you would put this up as well. Uh, kicking off Japan's National Day and Emperor Naruhito's birthday, House of Commons Speaker Fergus, Minister Honorable Ahmed uh, Hussein, and um, Champagne joined Japan's ambassador to Canada, Kenji Yamanochi, to crack open a cold one, a giant drum of sake. So we have all these beautiful visuals. Mm -hmm. And... I have been informed the ambassador chef has prepared over 1,000 pieces of sushi for tonight. I'm unsure what everyone else is going to eat because I'm already on plate three. (laughs) (laughs) Now, of course, this was the embassy of Japan, Mm -hmm. but it's not abnormal for nations to do this when they're hosting. Mm -hmm. This is a minister that went there and bought one portion for himself, so he can do some promotion. Now again, probably, probably, the optics were bad in terms of him actually eating it and showing himself enjoying them. And there's probably a different photo that he could have taken in that case. But come on, man. Mm -hmm. So apparently we're only allowed to promote industries that conservatives approve of. Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah, exactly. If, if we say it's okay, it's okay for the Canadian public. If we say it's not okay, it's not okay for the Canadian public because we need to rage farm off of it. Because let's face it, a $3.2 billion a year uh, industry in Atlantic Canada, a, a, a section of the country that will never vote us in, See how that worked? Did yeah. you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the reason why I posted the Stuart Benson. I showed the Stuart Benson clip. Because he had this comment to say. Mr. Grizzly, if you put it up. Mm-hmm. I've seen quite a few people upset that the, at this who were more than happy to scarf down the Nagasaki bluefin and imported sake at the Japanese emperor's birthday last week. And this is in regards to Lawrence Macaulay eating lobster in Malaysia, for those of you listening. Yes. So um, it's not that the conservatives have problem with bougie meals. No, no, no. I mean, remember on the night that Pierre Polliver made everybody stay in the House of Commons to vote in that telethon where they voted no on every single item on the on the budget yes every single he was a, he was out at a one thousand seven hundred dollar plate dinner six hundred one thousand six hundred yeah one thousand six hundred dollar plate dinner we want to get the numbers right hmm. maybe it was 17 i thought it was 16. i think it was 17 yeah because there was another thing that was a six hundred dollar plate dinner that's what i might day. be mixing up then yeah yeah yep yeah he had no problem with that and then he brought his kids back McDonald's. And they cheered him as he walked through with bags of McDonald's. 
Like he was a hero. That he expensed, by the way. <laughs> I paid for it and then expensed it. Yeah, you did pay for it. And then you expensed it. Oh, my but God. you had paid for it with, his, with a company credit card, <laughs> Government of Canada credit card. And then expensed <laughs> it. So he, don't even, he doesn't even see the bill. I'll, and here's the other thing. As the official leader of the opposition, he wouldn't pay for anything. Somebody else would pay for it, and it would be expensed through his office. It wouldn't come directly out of his pocket. Right. Right. Ah, <sighs> man. They just, they, they can't help themselves, yeah. can they? They can't help themselves whatsoever. Taking a slight move from the lobster stuff, but basically they're telling Atlantic Canadians, let, let's just make that clear. You don't matter. Like, they've just flipped the bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't care. They've just like literally flipped you the bird. Just ugh, can't believe it, these people. Um, staying in that sort of realm, um, there was an article in the Toronto Star yesterday that said nobody wants to have a beer with Justin Trudeau. Yeah, I saw that. If we believe recent polling, it appears that voters really, really don't want to sit down for a cold one with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. I would have no problem with it. Mm -hmm. Just saying. But we got this guy, and I'm saying this guy again, Pierre Polyver, Pierre Polyver, Jeff, Jeff w, WTF, why that face? <laughs> um, <laughs> or, well, that fits. Um, Tweeting this because, of course, he can never resist an opportunity to be the authentic prick that he is. Mm. Mr. Grizzly, if you would uh, put this up and uh, bring out your best uh, polyev voice for this one, please. Why would you want to have a beer with a self-righteous narcissist wagging his finger at you for heating your home and driving a car to work while he jets around the world? He'd make you pick up the tab, including the federal beer tax, which goes up April 1st. Okay. Pot. Kettle. Projection. Ring, 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 Projection ring. much? Ring, ring. Holy pick shit. Up the Mr. Grizzly? Ring, ring. <laughs> hello? Kettle? <laughs> or more like hello, cauldron? Cauldron. <laughs> this, is, this is pot. Psst, you're black. <laughs> it's just, oh, my word. So here we have, okay, well, let's go through this one. Why would you want to have a beer with a self-righteous narcissist? Projection. Wagging his finger at you in every one of his videos. He's got a finger going like this at you or like this, or right? For heating your home and driving a car to work while he jets around the world, the guy who's been jetting around the country. At the cost of eighteen thousand dollars a day to us, and he'd make you pick up the tab. Every statement he says, is an admission. I was like, and I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, in which finger wagging guy, jetting around the country, who called the Canadian brewer's product watered down and gutless because he's super thin skinned and doesn't have the professional temperament required for the job he seeks, has thoughts on self righteous narcissism. Yeah. <laughs> I, honest to goodness. I'm sure writers at, at, at um, this hour uh, are, are, has 22 minutes are sitting there going, how the hell are we supposed to write stuff like this when he's already... <laughs> I mean, and then we saw that little graphic that Creek Pete put up. Yeah. Again, we have the receipt. How he's making us pick up the tab. Stop treating us like fools. Here's the thing, though, and, and this is the honest-to-goodness truth. If people are not giving factual information, they will believe what's written by the right-wing rags that they read, which omit and leave out stuff nonstop. It's the reason we have a show. I got sick and tired of people being lied to. Yep. I got so tired of Canadians being lied to on the daily by national publications, national broadcasters, and, and, and did it delightfully. Because they wanted to rage farm. Because, I don't know, uh, maybe in this instance, for certain, not only do they have a right bent, a right lean, 
but 60% of the Canadian publications are owned by an American company. 60%. Now, who changed the rules on that? Uh Oh, that's right. Conservative Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Uh Now, just to put that graphic back up again, because it flashed very quickly in Creek Pete's video. Excellent video. Yes. When he says that uh, the Prime Minister would go out for a beer and then stick us with the tap. Mm -hmm. Total trips by Federal Party, 2019 to 2023. Independence, three. Block, 16, for a total of 100, uh, about $140,000. The NDP, 23, for a total of about 140000 The Liberals, 65, for a total of just under 500000 And the Conservatives, 97, for a total of 736000 And they're just the opposition. They haven't been in power since 2015. 20, yeah, 2015 was when they uh, were ceremoniously given the exit. <clears throat> Not unceremoniously, but ceremoniously, given the exit. Um, but Justin Trudeau is the one that will make us pick up the tab for the beer. They, they can't lie even. They, they're, they're terrible at lying. They lie so much that they've forgotten what they've done. And they expect us to believe they're bullshit. And again, I'm not saying, and I know you're not saying, that the liberals or NDP are innocent. We're not saying that. What we are saying is that the Conservative Party of Canada lies to your face when we have easily provable lies. We have the receipts to prove that you're lying to us. And they do it daily and continue to get away with it. And that is the part that has me angry and exasperated all the damn time. That is the thing. They lie. They don't get called out for their lies. This is the reason we have a program. This is the reason we have a show. Because we're sick of it. And we want to get factual information to Canadians so they can make an informed decision. Look, truth be told, if you look at the record historically, since, well, Joe Clark, for sure, and to a degree, John Diefenbaker, they were both progressives, by the way. They were very much progressives. They did some good things. Now, Joe Clark wasn't in power for very long. Brian Mulroney did great things when it comes to the environment. But we know about the envelopes of cash. That's not a, it's not a fallacy. It's true. Right. We know about that. And I'm not saying that it's been a whole bunch of non-corrupted individuals in the Liberal Party of Canada or the NDP Party of Canada. I'm not saying that at all. It just seems to be that there's more corruption within the Conservative Party of Canada. Well, it's just really the Reform Party because it's not conservative anymore. And it's definitely not progressive. They lie every day and don't get called out for it. And the media has finally caught on, caught on, or maybe, maybe they've always known, but they just let it go and let it go and let it go. And I think now they're just fed up with it. Like, why have they waited so long to call out Jeff on his lies? They're doing it now. And I'm thankful. You notice he hasn't been on camera in a little while, though. That wasn't something Mm -hmm. that he could control, his own camera crew. Mm Mm-hmm like an actual press conference where members of the press are there. He won't do that for a while. He'll be gone for another 30 or 40 days before he does that again. Sure. He'll have another press release where he has his own private crew that he's hired to make him look special and unique. He may do it in a crowd of people that he's in all likelihood hired to be there to cheer him on. Maybe not. Maybe me, maybe he hasn't hired them. Maybe there are people who actually believe his lies who will show up to cheer him on either way. It's his lies that I can't take anymore. And I know Canadians are fed up, and that's why I continue to say it, and I will continue to say it. 2024 is the year of the pushback. We're fed up, and we're not, we're not tolerating it any longer. And that's my rant for right. today. Yeah. Um, we touched about, on it a little bit yesterday, uh, the whole thing with, um, I'm going to say Dina, Sheriff. Deanna? I don't know if it's Deanna. Yeah, I don't know. Is it Deanna? I think it's Deanna. I, 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 don't, I don't know her well enough no, to know. Um, I saw some of the videos. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to show them. No, no. Um, it's, well, it's one of them is about 15 minutes worth, I think. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I think we all agree. Dina. Okay. Ina tells us it's Dina. Okay. 
Sorry. Yeah. Um, very, very clear. Nobody ever under any circumstances deserves to be assaulted. Correct. Ever. But there is something that did, how do you put it, become clear to me when I'm watching this video, watching these videos. And it has to do with them saying that this movement is peaceful. Because I watched that video, and to me, if there was any doubt that this is an inherently violent movement rather than the peaceful one, mm -hmm. we need to consider how often these people get physical with each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. They keep swearing to us up and down, side to side and all around that their movement is peaceful, all about love and unity. But they can't stand each other and they keep on putting hands upon each other. Well, it's all about... And in one of those videos that I saw mm -hmm. um, before Contois, who is the guy we talked about uh, two episodes ago, I think, or maybe yesterday, but the guy who had gotten arrested, mm -hmm. tinfoil hat guy. So I didn't know about the Dina, Dina stuff at okay. that time, but that's why it was, he was arrested because, you know, the body slam. But literally seconds before that happened, there's clips of the video of her trying to step to people, trying to get her hands on people, trying to get up in people's face. He actually has two or three people trying to block her, mm -hmm. you know, like it's a hockey yeah. brawl. Yeah, I did see that. And she's seen a bunch of stuff like this. And he actually grabs her by the back of the coat and removes her and walks her up Parliament mm -hmm. Hill and calls for Parliamentary Protective Services to arrest her because she's assaulting people. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what the order and the sequence of all the things that happened. But up until that point, the guy in the yellow jacket was doing the correct thing. Because she was the one that was seeking to get into some type of physical well, she was she was And she was reaching out with her hand. Mm -hmm. She was reaching out. The first person to put hands on someone. Yeah, you're at fault. So she is no angel. No, and, and we were never saying that either. But look, I, I don't know the person. I think... I think her motivations are good. I think her actions are bad. That's my personal opinion. So, um, yeah. So people tried to separate people. And the guy who was trying to separate, trying to make sure that there was no violence at first, he's the one that got arrested. But clearly there was something that happened. Um, I tweeted that, and um, Dina, for some reason, happened to like the tweet. Mm. The tweet where I said, nobody under any circumstances deserves to be assaulted ever. With that said, if there was ever any doubt that this is an inherently violent movement rather than a peaceful one, consider that they get physical with each other, and this is far from the first time. Mm -hmm. Not sure why she would like that. I don't know. Look, we don't like extremism on left or right. We just don't like extremism. And I, I think she's leaning into the extremism. From what I have seen, I don't know her. We've never met. I can't form an honest opinion. A fully, I, can't, I don't have a fully formed honest opinion of her because I don't know her. I never knew of her until this. No, I knew who she I was. Didn't, I never even knew of her existence. I didn't know of her existence at all. I, I did. I have for quite some time. And <clears throat> she does, uh, she's a provocateur. And I understand what she's trying to do. And I don't disagree with what she's trying to do. I disagree with the manner in which she's doing it. From what I've seen. Again, I don't know her as a person. I don't know what her motivation is. I agree with yeah. what she's trying to do. I disagree with the manner in which she's trying to do it. Yeah. Violent and I have an expression. It never, it never de-escalates. It escalates. And... Yeah. I just disagree with the manner in which she's trying to do it. Yep. And I have a, um, an expression. And again, I'm not saying that this justifies violence being done to people at all. No, never under any circumstances. Do you put hands on another person without their prior consent? Mm -hmm. 
for any reason. Period. But he or she or they who stir the pot should not be acting surprised when some of the contents wind up on their hands. If there's a pot and you grab that <laughs> you grab that spoon and you start stirring and something goes sploosh, and you go, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I got pot contents on my hands. How unfair is that? You stirred the pot. Look, it would have been just as easy. <laughs> that was a choice. It would have been easy for her to go there and stand across the street from them and hold up a sign and use a bullhorn if she needed to, to tell them she was against them. I think getting in people's faces like that on a constant recurring basis, because she does this all the time. I'm going to say, and this, this is my opinion, my personal opinion from what I've seen. Okay. I'm going to say this, that will turn people off. That will turn people against you. I understand fighting fire with fire. I do. I get it. But there are ways to fight fire with fire without actually stooping to somebody else's level. And I think she's just going about it in the wrong way. I get the spirit of what she's trying to do. And I agree with her counter protesting of horrible people who are trying to take people's rights away, who are, 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 are spewing falsehoods and outlandish conspiracy theories and want to uh, have a coup basically. So I agree with her motivation. I just don't agree with her method. And, mm -hmm. th and, and again, that is from what I have seen. I don't know her. She could be a sweetheart. I don't know. I don't know if this is an act. I don't know if this is a put on. I don't know if she's trying to push her own personal agenda. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I only know what I've seen. Now, I, I'm noticing on the chats that people are telling people to stop expressing their thoughts on something. Please don't do mm -hmm. that. Please don't do that. If nothing being said is actually offensive, please don't do that. This is a forum where we allow people to speak. And if they are speaking about personal experiences with someone, we allow them to do that. We don't invalidate their experience. So just please don't mm -hmm. do that. I we realize this is a hot pod. I, 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 I understand it's a hot pod issue, and I, lot, I understand that there's a lot of a lot of passion, mm -hmm. but let's let's not make this a channel where we gripe about our personal issues with someone, but let's not make this a channel also where somebody has some personal experience to bring where we ask them to censor themselves. We don't want to do that. Well. Let's let's just have engage engagement thing, right? And I understand right now what's happening if i'm watching this conversation is that one purpose one person is focused up focused on that which happened in the moment which it seems that it seems that was a group that seemed to have ganged up on dina and that's not right mm -hmm. but what the other person is sharing of their personal experience is not something that happened on that day mm -hmm. both can be true exactly both can be true. All good, Michael. I understood that. It can, yep. It can be true mm. that on that day, people were intimidating her. And maybe she didn't react in the best way and things got inflamed and someone got arrested for it. Mm -hmm. Again, yes. I don't know this but person. But it can also be true that that person agitated and did something to someone else on another occasion. Mm -hmm that caused something and we can talk about both experiences right just I, I i want this to be a place where people can talk about that stuff so just when people are sharing personal experiences just please don't ask them not to do that All right uh how are we doing for time mr Guzan? Uh, we got about five minutes sir all right some of the big news that happened yesterday was with regard to inflation because some numbers came out yesterday 
And they were actually pretty good, mm -hmm. I have to say. 2.9? Yes, inflation came in at 2.9% from the Statistics Canada. They put out the number, and that's down from 3.4%, which I think is an absolutely great thing, mostly based on the price of gas. So once again, we have a situation with conservatives that um, well, they're, while they're out there screaming that the carbon tax, which we told you would be going up by like 2.56 cents or something like that, is going to cause you to lose your home and not be able to eat and curve your spine and infect your children with a whole bunch of illnesses and whatever. Um, the price of gas has gone down more than what the carbon tax increase in April is going to raise it by. Now, in when the December numbers came out and inflation went up to 3.4, you had... Uh, Pierre Poliev with um, a whole bunch of tweets out there going, oh my God, thanks to Justin Trudeau, basically doing the thanks Obama thing again. Mm -hmm. Inflation's up to 3.4% and Justin Trudeau did that. Like this. But I didn't see any tweets from Pierre Poliev yesterday saying, hey, inflation is down a full half point in just one month. Of course not. Great job, Trudeau. Of course not. And I'm when it goes up, just, it's Justin Trudeau's fault. When it goes down, it gets yeah, ignored. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just wondering when it is that we can expect Pierre Polyev's tweet. Oh, that'll I'm be just never. wondering. That'll be never. He'll never praise anything the prime minister does. When Even if it was for the benefit of every single Canadian and lifted everybody up, and created a better world, he wouldn't praise it. He would find he would find fault with it somewhere and probably just completely ignore it altogether like it never happened. So let's just put this up. Let, let's just flash back to last month when the inflation numbers came out. This was Pierre Polyev's tweet. Mr. Bislin, mm -hmm. you put it up there. Again, please do the voice. After eight years of Justin Trudeau's inflationary spending, Canadians are paid more to eat, heat, and house themselves. Not worth the cost. So they have a picture of, and then a meme of Justin Trudeau tinted in red again, because he's the devil, with a whole bunch of headlines. Canada's annual inflation rises to 3.4% in December, Statistics Canada. Inflation rises to 3.5% from the Toronto Star, City News, CBC, Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. But I searched high and low his Twitter feed yesterday for just inflation decreases again. Canada's annual inflation rate, the second lowest it's been since August 2021. Since August 2021, it's only been under 3% twice. It was at 2.8% in June of last year, then started to go up again, and now it is for the second time. It's almost the lowest inflation we've had in close to two years. Uh huh. And the inflation rate number, if you take out the price of gas, is down to 3.2%, which is the lowest it's been since, I think, April 2021. Yeah. And food inflation on food specifically, which had been very, very high, well, they went down 1.3% from 4.7 to 3.4. And in the last employment report, we were saying that wages were still up at 5.4%. 5, 5 so wages are rising faster than inflation for something like the 11th month in a row. Wages are rising faster than inflation at a rate of about 2.5%. Inflation on food has gone down 1.3%, faster than the 0.5% drop in the overall inflation rate itself. But conservatives are not celebrating. And then you had Premier Scott Moe go out and tweet that because his uh, party is not longer charging 
carbon for carbon that and their inflation rate came down came in that came in lower mm-hmm. than that right this guy so he says this there we go let's just put it right up there for all the kids to see what scott mo did Saskatchewan's decision to remove the Trudeau carbon tax on home heating dropped Saskatchewan's inflation rate to, in January to 1.9%, down from 2.7% in December and well below the national rate of 2.9%. According to Statistics Canada, quote, in Saskatchewan, the collection of the carbon levy ceased in January 2024, contributing to the province's year-over-year price decline of natural gas. The Trudeau carbon tax was over a quarter of the cost of natural gas in Saskatchewan. If the feds are actually serious about fighting inflation, they would scrap the carbon tax on everyone and everything. Okay. Well, a little inconvenient truth. In Manitoba, where they didn't stop Mm -hmm. the carbon price, inflation dropped from 1.7 to 0.8. So it would appear that the inflation rate in Manitoba dropped 0.1% more than it did in Saskatchewan without removing the carbon stuff. So maybe the carbon stuff didn't have much to do with it. Maybe. And the thing is, is that Statistics Canada said that ceasing to charge their customers the carbon price contributed to the 26.6% decrease in the cost of natural gas year over year. It did not make up the entire quarter of the cost Mm. that was decreased. But Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe is saying that the 26.6% decrease year over year is all due to him saying, I'm not going to charge you the carbon tax anymore. Which, by the way, kids, who happen to be living in Saskatchewan, just because he's not charging it to you doesn't mean that the province is not obligated to remit it to the federal government. So whether you pay for it directly or not, he's still going to have to transfer the cash to Ottawa that should have been collected, which means it's still going to come from your taxes. So he's just hiding it. That's all he's doing. It's a shell game. Nothing more. He's pretending you're not paying for it, but you still are. Of course you are. Yeah. <sighs> Kids, Cubs, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed. Indeed. All right, Kids and Cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this to you. My voice is actually coming back a little bit. Mm-hmm. I've noticed as the show is going, I'm not quite there yet, but hopefully by by lunch, <laughs> I'll be back to my regular voice. Um, remember, sharing is caring. So please, 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 please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And if you do not want to miss an episode, you do not have to, thanks to the Ray Girl, because she sponsored our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And that's, if you subscribe there, well, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it will come directly to you. And uh, if you scan that QR code that's right under my chin, that will bring you there as well. If you'd like to support us in other ways, please go to the True North Eager Beaver Incorporated and be, uh, True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated. I can't even get the name of the company. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm terrible. No wonder we have no advertisers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to our YouTube page and make like Kit Elaine and smash all those buttons, like, share, subscribe. That's all the good stuff. And that helps us a lot. We're getting close to 700. So um, yeah, help us get us over the hump. And if you'd like to help us in yet another way, you can go to our coffee page. That's the squiggly by Mr. Grizzly's head there on the screen. If you scan that, that's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And uh, there you can make a donation to the Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund, which will help keep us moist. And uh, as you can uh, see, 
I, I need a little moistness. So if uh, you can help out, that would be a <laughs> really, really, really appreciated. Um, what else do we have? Because democracy is something that you do, do write those letters, please, and uh, find a way to get involved. Sorry, I got a cough. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> you okay? Yep, I'm okay. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? Words of wisdom. Well, sir, that is a complicated thing now, isn't it? Uh, in these incredibly uh, frustrating political times where we get trials and tribulations on a daily basis, and I find myself exas exasperated on the daily, try and keep your head above you. Remember to breathe with intent deeply to calm yourself. Remember to smile at everybody you encounter because it gives more to them than it gives to you. Remember to be kind because kindness costs you nothing. Always be polite because you know what? Kindness and politeness go hand in hand and they'll make your day and the day of another even better. Very, very, very good words. Thank you. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Oh no, I just saw that uh, Miss Shattuca is at the hospital with Mateo. Oh no, oh, no. I hope that everything is uh, is okay. Well, I mean, obviously it's not okay because he's at the hospital, but I hope it's not too serious. We'll find out. Uh, and that he bounces back really, really quickly. We're, please keep us posted, and we're sending a whole bunch of uh, healing energy and good vibes there. Right. And um, to the kids in the caps uh, chat that we're having a lively discussion, please, please, please don't take anything too personally about what I said. That I'm not trying to like do a big, big ad admonishment. I'm just trying to send over the uh, the general philosophy of our show is that we want this to be a place where people can actually talk without being shut down and that's from both sides mm -hmm. right all parties involved in the conversation i'm not targeting just just one person just you know say your piece and put it out there there's no need to beat a dead horse by coming back to it all the time but also allow people to say their piece and you know we, we want this to be exactly we, we want like as Cassie Lake says, be kind and gentle to each other in the chat as well. All right? Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. Try him. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. And Mr. Grizzly, I don't know if you had anything for an Easter egg, but I had a I visual something. created by uh, someone oh, who I do follows have, us. I'll throw that, but I do have something quickly here. All right. I, I do have this. It's like you know, lobster. So, uh, this is uh, at Tom St. Denis, number two. He says, uh, I did a thing. And it's a visual, I guess it's an AI generated uh, cartoon image of a lobster with a Canada flag on it uh, clawing the F out of an apple. <laughs> that has a, has a maple leaf like, on it. Yeah. Has a maple leaf in it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, mwah, chef's kiss. How do, you, how do you like them apples? <laughs> well, here's what I have. So, I'm curious to hear what the Conservative of Canada will have to say about this. I'm going to put this on the screen, let it sit, and then I'll read it, and then I got to go. Yes. Could Canadians lose access to Pornhub? Depends on what happens with the Senate bill. 
The owners mm-hmm. of Pornhub say uh, blocking access to Canadians is among its options it's considering as it tries to persuade parliamentarians to reject an approach for age verification outlined in a con- controversial Senate bill. The Pornhub website is shown on a computer screen in Toronto, Wednesday, December 16, 29. The owners of Pornhub say blocking access to Canadians is among options they're considering as they tried to sw- persuade. We've taken different options in different jurisdictions. Uh, I don't want to speculate on the bill in its current state. We're going to committee to ensure that the wrong legislation doesn't get passed. So it's, I'm curious to see what what the conservatives will say about that one. Right? Think of it as a hot button issue. Considering they're they're all about freedom of expression, freedom of choice. The government is blocking your access to the internet. They're going to take away your. Oh, so how do you feel about the the porno, pornography ones that, you know, the freedom of expression and freedom of speech and people want to look at pornography and have the right to do it and, and you want to take that away from them? What, are you going to fight for them now, conservatives? Are you going to fight for people now who might lose access to that? I'm just curious if they're going to, are they going to be hypocrites and, and turn tail and crawl back into the holes and under the rocks that they live in? Under the rock that they live under, I should say? Or are they going to fight for, you know, people's rights to make a choice? I'm curious. I really am curious. Yeah. And considering that there's, we didn't get to it in the show, but considering that there's news that came out today that uh, Daniel Smith is now coming for sex ed. Oh, we knew that would happen. Yeah. She now wants Alberta to become the first province in which parents opt in to sex ed on behalf of their kids rather than opt out, which has been an option since 2009 because she wants to ensure that people learn about this stuff only when they're ready. Actually, it's not when they're ready. It's when their parents decide that they're ready, I guess. And uh, which, you know, fine, parents have a say. That's why they have the opt out. But now nobody gets to have it unless you specifically opt in is the goal that she wants to pass into legislation. And uh, she's basically, she says that it's about sex or sexual orientation, but she meant, not sexual orientation, about sex education. But she, while she's talking about that, um, she mentions well, kids are not ready. We, we mustn't assume that uh, parents are okay with their child learning about sexual health and gender identity and sexual orientation. Yeah, it's all complicated. She just slides them in there. So I got to go. <sighs> I'll see you. Bye, kids. <laughs>